Adoption, it's a beautiful word and has many applications. Do you adopt a child from your state, elsewhere in the country, or elsewhere in the world? Do you prefer not to adopt special needs children? Do you insist on only adopting special needs children? What about the age level and development of the child? What if the child hasn't even been born yet? How would you like to give birth to your adopted child? Impossible, you say? Not so fast. I'm Scott Kump, and today on Life and Faith Indiana, I'm speaking with Kristen and Craig Nichols, who indeed gave birth to their adopted daughter. Welcome to you both. Hey, thank you for for having us. us. Now, a few weeks ago, listeners may have heard my interview with Mark Mellinger, who now works for the National Embryo Donation Center, the organization which assisted the Nichols in their unusual adoption. So I hope I didn't spoil too much anticipation of what's coming, but there's still some interesting details to come. So why don't the two of you start by telling us your story, your married life, the twists and turns, and this bizarre road that led you to your miracle baby. My wife and I, we actually met at Bible College. We were in Australia, and I was there for about three and a half years, and we ended up overlapping about a year and a half. And during that time, we became really good friends, and we were involved in a church plant that we went to California, from Australia to California, and in Orange County. And we were there for about four years. And during that time, we started dating, Mm -hmm. and we ended up getting married out in California and loved it. And then in 2010, the Lord kind of brought us back here to Indiana, and, well, when I was talking about the winding road, I didn't mean literal, literally across <laughs> the world, but you know, we'll go with that. <laughs> yeah. So it was, it was really interesting. We got married and ended up moving back here to Indiana, and a lot of our friends were starting to get pregnant. And a lot of our close friends, you know, were um, having babies, and then my younger brother had a baby. And over that course of maybe two or three years, we weren't preventing ourselves from getting pregnant, but we just weren't getting pregnant. And we were, we were wondering, why were we not getting pregnant? So did you see fertility specialists or just a doctor in general to find out what was going on? Well, at first we started going down the road of figuring out what it might be. And my wife, we we got her checked out to begin with. Yeah. And so um, it seemed like everything was okay with me. So then we kind of went down the road of, well, let's explore, you know, what could be inhibiting us from getting pregnant from Craig. And so we found out that there was a really low sperm count and the chances of us getting pregnant were really low. So we kind of had to do something. We were either going to adopt, we would have to do IVF. And so for our first adoption, we were like, we really want to do a traditional adoption. So we had heard about embryo adoption, but we were kind of like, that's a little bit weird. We don't really know what that might entail. What it might entail. I didn't necessarily want to be pregnant at that point. I was younger and, you know, just kind of didn't really know what we wanted to do at that point with that. So we went down the road of traditional adoption and ended up adopting Xavier. And then a few who years... Who is now five years who's old? now five, yeah. yeah. now five. And so a few years later, we were like, well, we want a sibling for him. And so we kind of started exploring again, what could we do? Do we want to do traditional adoption again? Or are there other options out there? And so we kind of thought about fostering to adopt. And it didn't really seem like the right fit because we wanted to build our family. And in fostering... They want to reunite the children with their biological families as much as possible. So our goals were different in that. So then we had remembered embryo adoption. We're like, man, what about that? I'm kind of getting to a point where I'm getting older. If I ever want to be pregnant, we kind of got to jump on that bandwagon now. So we just went down that road. We, we Googled and we found the National Embryo Donation Center in Knoxville, Tennessee. So we went down for our initial consult. They checked me out to make sure I could carry a baby. And I could. Everything checked out fine. And so we started moving forward. We were matched with a couple of donors that had donated their embryos to the National Embryo Donation Center. And we kind of just went from there. Since you mentioned National Embryo Donation Center, first of all, their contact information, if people are interested in either in helping them or using their services, their phone number is 865-777-2013. And again, that's in Knoxville, Tennessee. And their website is embryodonation.org. Now, the other thing that I need to point out, because Kristen, you mentioned IVF or in vitro fertilization, Mm -hmm. the National Embryo Donation Center does not perform IVF. I'm not aware of them making statements either for or against IVF. And it is controversial for a couple of reasons, because there can be issues with implanting and 
Typically in IVF, more embryos are created than the couple wants. And okay, what do they do with these extra embryos? A lot of times they're destroyed or experimented upon and then destroyed. So that's actually why the National Embryo Donation Center was formed to deal with that. It was a life-affirming mm-hmm. choice for, you know, these fertilized eggs are human beings and they wanted them to have a chance. So somebody needs to adopt them. So that's what that came about. Again, uh, National Embryo Donation Center, they're in Knoxville, Tennessee, 865-777-2013 or embryodonation.org. You actually had to go down there to Knoxville in order to have this process. That's one of the things that distinguishes them from the organizations like Snowflake, which people may have heard of. I believe in cases of Snowflake, they ship the embryo to a location near you, but you had to go to Knoxville. Yeah, we go to Knoxville, but I actually really like it because everything's all in one place. It's not like you have to have, you know, a different doctor up here performing. Plus, yeah. then you have to get matched with another organization. And I think actually the cost is lower with NEDC because of that as well, because they do it all in one place. So that was kind of appealing to us. Plus, it's in Tennessee. I yeah, mean, it's right. beautiful. Did you, Who did you want to do go the uh, sightseeing while you were down there? A little bit, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we went, we went to a number of different places, and uh, it's beautiful. We always wanted to go in the fall where the, the leaves are changing yeah. color and stuff like that, but we kind of missed that window. Just barely. Yeah. But we they have beautiful in lakes in Knoxville, and it's just— U of T. Yeah. That campus is— beautiful. University of Tennessee. Yeah. Now, you mentioned cost. There is expense, but you, in effect, got, for lack of a better word, financial aid. Yeah, so we applied for—I probably applied for five different grants that I found. I just Googled— embryo adoption grants. And there's not as many as traditional adoption that you can apply for, but there are some out there. And um, one of the ones that we got was from the Cade Foundation. So if people want to look that up, that's a great resource too. But the Cade Foundation really supports families as well on their journeys of infertility. And then they also provide grants up to $10,000 for families that are in financial need. I'm Scott Kump, and today on Life in Faith Indiana, I'm speaking with Kristen and Craig Nichols. They are a couple who has used the services of the National Embryo Donation Center, and they have given birth to their adopted daughter. That's kind of an unusual experience. For more information on the National Embryo Donation Center, please call 865-777-2013 or go online to embryodonation.org. Now, in April of this year, you gave birth to Stella Rose. That's mm-hmm. right. Uh, and that, if people wondered why we're hearing all that cooing in the background, <laughs> that's why she's here in the studio with she's us. Here in the studio. So is Xavier, but he's being nice and quiet over there and behaving himself. <laughs> so you gave birth to Stella in April. Yep. And she was frozen for six years okay, before did, that. To your knowledge, is there are there any adverse effects from these children being, because some of these embryos are frozen longer than that. Yeah. Yeah. Some of them don't survive the thaw, but from what we know, I think there was one that was born that was frozen. It was around 24 years. The embryo was frozen. Wow. And then, yeah, she just gave birth, I think a year or two ago, something like that. Mark would know, but yeah, <laughs> but yeah so it's amazing. I don't think it um, affects anything, mm. the quality of the embryo at all. It's, they could be frozen forever, basically. So they thaw and then they implanted the child. Yeah. I mean, how long did all of that take? Um, it's just a couple minutes when you're actually in really? with Dr. Keenan. They do the thaw. I think Carol Summerfelt, that's um, the embryologist there, she starts early in the morning thawing the embryos. She's like their first babysitter, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but then by the time we get there, it's really quick. So you're just in and out in maybe 10 minutes. You're at the National Embryo Donation Center for about an hour or two hours. Mm. Yeah, by the time you show up yeah. and get checked and in all and all that. that but, but the process. Yeah, by which it's really fast. The transfer is really quick. Yeah. But as far as you know, the actual childbirth was like a conventional. Yep. I mean, yeah. you had the exactly all, the every, same. All, nine month pregnancy yep. and yep. all the morning sickness and the kicking and yep. the birth and, and all of that sort of thing. Yeah. And people also ask me if I can nurse, which yes, you can <laughs> definitely <laughs> uh, nurse your baby because it's the exact same. Once you're pregnant, it's the exact same as just being pregnant. Other than you take some hormone shots for a little bit yeah. longer, but yeah. yeah. And then that's the same. Those, which is crazy. It's like 12 weeks or longer. Yeah, of shots and shot. they're big oh, wow. needles, but it's not bad. You know, like you get through it, you, you do what you have it. to do. It's you kind of get used to it. And yeah, it's definitely doable. You think you'd do it again? We've done you- it three times. So that, that actually brings up an interesting point of our story. 
we did the first transfer, it ended in a chemical pregnancy. So that means like I, I got pregnant, but at the six week ultrasound, there was no baby there. Mm. So that was really hard. And this can be a long winding road. Yeah. So you got to be really praying every step of the way, asking God, you know, just show me what I should do, how long I should stick with it. So there was that pregnancy. And then a few months later, we transferred two more embryos and we saw twins at the six week ultrasound, but then at the nine week ultrasound, their hearts had stopped beating at six weeks. So that has to be discouraging what's yes. happened, yeah. especially when it happens more than once. I oh, mean, yeah. I know people, they lose one child and it's devastating. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. It was yeah. like, do we keep going? What do you want us to do, Lord? We feel like you put us on this path, but it's not working out how we thought it would. Yeah. And after that one, we waited quite a bit of time. Yeah. I mean, how long? Because I miscarried on Mother's Day. So that was kind of like, wow. Yeah. What is going on here, Lord? Yeah. Another sock in the gut. Yeah. 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 It was painful. And I'm an identical twin. And so for us to have twins, I was like so excited. But in the midst of it all, God is teaching us and using it in our lives to draw us close to him. Yes. And run and, to him and, and run pray. To him. For this last transfer, I feel like we really got on our knees. We got all the prayer warriors in our church to pray multiple times. I got my womb anointed with oil. <laughs> like we were just like, you know, Lord, we, we want this. We want it to be your will, obviously, but we feel like you put us on this path. So, you know, there's power in prayer and we need to be praying about it and really asking the Lord to come in and intervene in those situations. And then, you know, he does what he's going to do, but we're asking him because if you don't ask, you might not get it. <laughs> we need to be in prayer. I have one more question for you. If somebody has wants to know more, maybe they're considering this or maybe they're just curious, would you be willing to be a resource to reach out to somebody who wants to know more? Yeah, for sure. I would love it. We recommend that if people want to know more about your story, want to communicate with you, that they would contact you through the National Embryo Donation Center. And again, their contact information is 865 877-2013, or you can go online at embryodonation.org. And again, that is the organization that stole Mark Mellinger away from us. Uh, (laughs) So you might even get a chance to talk to Mark down there. Again, my guests today have been Kristen and Craig Nichols. Thank you for sharing your unusual story with us. Thank you. Thank you for having us.